My next guest is not a trans activist. She's an activist who happens to be trans. She's a political activist. She's a trade union activist. She's a human rights activist. And she is very, very welcome on board the Sputnik. She is Debbie Hayton. Debbie, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let's begin by, by learning a bit more about you. Give us your background, if you would. Well, George, I'm a teacher. Uh, I've been teaching for 26 years. I teach physics at a school in central England. Uh, but I transitioned uh, 10 years ago now, get on for 10 years ago. That's the reason I'm here, I guess, because although I've transitioned, I have grave doubts and grave reservations about the way that trans activism is taking the world. Yeah, we'll come on to that. But let me just ask you, but only because I'm curious, uh, how did the school react to the transition? Were the authorities good about it? Were the children good about it? Uh, the school was very, very good. Uh, as, as I say to people, we live in a progressive society, a liberal society, and the school was very happy with that. Uh, well, uh, the school was happy to uh, facilitate my transition at work. Uh, now, you make the point that, uh, that this has become perhaps the hottest uh, political potato uh, of them all, oddly enough. Uh, I was actually attacked at the University of Aberdeen by people who described themselves as trans activists before I had literally ever said a single word on the subject in public, anywhere, in public or in private. Uh, but I have, as many people have, uh, really mixed feelings about the whole subject. I. I treat trans people as they want to be treated. I address them as they want to be uh, addressed. Uh, but freedom is about uh, your freedom to swing your fist, uh, ending at the point of the other fellow's chin, isn't it? I mean, a high street store was in the news uh, last weekend uh, because a woman was uh, in the changing room, communal changing room, in her underwear, when what she described as two six-foot men who identified as women came into the changing room, and she didn't like it. And all these things, this is probably at the trivial end of the uh, spectrum on this, but all these things are causing angst all round, aren't they? Well, they are, and it's not helping. It, this doesn't help transgender people, George, at all. Uh, this was the reason why I started getting into this campaign and, and, and said why I was exasperated with transgender activism, activism. This idea that whatever we want, we can have, and everybody else needs to give word to us on it, uh, it's, not, it it's not acceptable in a society where different people have got to get by with each other. The vexed issues are like the one I mentioned, changing rooms, uh, uh, lavatories, uh, swimming, uh, swimming pools, and so on. How do we resolve this, in your view? Well, the problem is, going back 10, 20, 30 years, transsexuals were uh, accommodated within women's spaces, and it's the way that we'd always, it had always happened. There were few transsexuals. Those that had transitioned, the assumption was that they'd had uh, gender surgery, hormone therapy, so they'd... Uh, they'd actually changed something about their bodies, not just in their minds, but their bodies had changed. And this happened, and it, not all women were happy with it. You know, nobody's saying that. But this was the, these were the arrangements. But recently, everything's changed. Suddenly, to be a transsexual is not somebody who's made changes to their bodies. To be transgender is somebody who just has a feeling, basically, or makes an assertion. So we've moved on from the position where transsexual people who, quite frankly, probably pass best in the shower than anywhere else, uh, have also been displaced from this by uh, transgender people. Uh, perhaps people who were formerly known as transvestites, George, if I, if I want to be uh, uh, provocative there, sometimes people ask, where have all the transvestites gone? Uh, so a wider group of people is now taking the taking the term. It's become extremely divisive politically, obviously, with even uh, politically radical people uh, like, uh, like Germaine Greer uh, or left-of-centre people like the, uh, the writer 
J.K. Rowling, uh, basically being no platform, cancelled, uh, uh, e effectively banished from uh, public space. That's troubling, isn't it? Well, it is, because there's, th there's uh, words which we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say, but also it comes down to thoughts as well, that people are being condemned for what they might be thinking. And this is, this is dangerous. This is what we uh, read about in, uh, in dystopian societies, and it's, it's here with us. In my own case, uh, they, they quite wrongly read what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm not thinking what they think I'm thinking at all. Uh, I personally knew someone who, and uh, I knew him as a man, I knew her when she transitioned, and funnily enough, I then got to know him again when he transitioned back again. So they're uh, quite wrong uh, in views that they attribute to me, but that's not important. J.K. Rowling is a huge cultural figure, uh, the biggest export earner uh, in the country, I think, that we have got, yet she's being treated as if she was a criminal. Yes, because what she essentially did was she reclaimed the word woman for her sex. That was at the basis of, her, uh, of her, what she said last summer, and it's the focus of the attacks against her. She thinks that women are adult human females, to use the definition in the dictionary, and she's right. But to say that gives, the, gives that, uh, that idea credibility in the minds of people who want to take the credibility away from it. They want the word woman to mean something quite different. But it's swept all before it, hasn't it? It has conquered the, the, this, uh, this radical uh, take on this, has, has swept everything aside. Health boards uh, excise the word woman from, from public notices and from their discourse. Uh, we're told that there are chest feeding classes and uh, postnatal people uh, rather than postnatal women and so on. How has it been so successful? I have never seen a very radical revolutionary take on something ever to be so successful before. Well, you mentioned J.K. Rowling. There's lots of other people who have got huge concerns. But after seeing what's happened to J.K. Rowling, don't speak out. If they, if they say uh, what they think, then their, their income, their, uh, their careers may be at risk. J.K. Rowling may be a little bit more protected uh, in that regard. But uh, there are many, many, many other people who can't say what they really think. So people are silenced. But also, there's a feeling here that... Uh, does it really matter? If we replace the word pregnant woman with pregnant people, it's more inclusive. It's, uh, it includes more people. We're being, uh, we're being uh, nice to people. Well, I would say that we're not. I think we are erasing uh, key terminology. And we need to be looking at why that's being uh, erased and who is driving this uh, campaign to erase it. Who is driving it then? I would like to know. I really would, uh, where this is actually coming from, George, because theories have been put forwards, but I don't think are actually, I don't think are credible, really, that there is a Mr. Big. It's like sometimes you think you're in a James Bond movie where there's a, a Mr. Big hiding, uh, you know, hiding in the secret, secret location. I, I, honestly don't, I honestly don't think that is actually the case. Lesbians are being accused of transphobia because they don't want to sleep with a trans person. Yes, and it's always lesbians who, get, who, who bear the brunt of that, isn't it? There's also dating sites for straight men. Uh, straight men who decide they don't want to uh, sleep with a trans woman with male genitalia don't seem to be coming under the same pressure at all. Where is it all heading, Debbie? Uh, it's heading... It's, he it's, it's heading to the top of politics. We have politicians who are being uh, ridiculed for being unable to define what a woman is, and it's politicians on the left in this country who are going to be presented with that question every single time, what is a woman? Uh, it's a situation we need to grapple with, and we need to come up with some, with some resolution to this so that Why everybody they all can feeling, feel though? safe. I, I mean, I watched in, in amazement I expect it from Labour politicians. They're much more right on uh, and, uh, and down with the kids. 
But I've seen conservative ministers literally unable, unwilling really, to define what a woman is. Well, they're frightened of the impact of activist groups. Uh, they hope it goes away. They hope it's something that they can ignore so that uh, they don't have to uh, deal with, address the issue. Uh, politicians need to take a lead and say that women are female people and while transsexuals or the transgender people should be treated with dignity and respect, we cannot accept the uh, this notion that there is no significant difference between somebody like me, who is a male person who has transitioned, and a woman. We are the, we are the opposite sex for, for a starter. So politicians need to take a lead on this and be willing to... Uh, be willing to talk to uh, noisy activists and not just uh, avoid the issue. Now, you're far from avoiding the issue. You're on television with me talking about it, and trust me, this interview will travel. Uh, how do people react to you and the stance, the take that you have on these issues? Well, I, uh, I experience good and bad across the entire spectrum in terms of response. Many people contact me to say thank you very much for the work I'm doing. Uh, more often it's private. I often get messages saying uh, essentially that we really appreciate the work you're doing, Debbie, but I couldn't possibly say so myself for fear of being uh, cancelled. So I, I, I get a lot of messages like that. But I also receive a lot of uh, negative feedback as well, a lot of criticism, some of which is perhaps is fair, uh, but much of which I would say is unfair. It's personal ad hominem attacks, which attack me as a person, not me, for, not for the things I say. Debbie Hayton, thanks for joining us on board the Sputnik. Thank you.